It's a big bear. Got a big bear spotted. Now we just gotta go around, get close enough to get a shot at. It begins with a legendary pioneer in wildlife filming. Wilderness, adventure, and fair chase trophies define him. A son adds to the legacy and becomes the voice for a generation of hunters. Today, a third generation pursues trophy big game in places where success comes from skill, determination, and grit. Now, 60 years of hunting tradition comes down to one defining moment. We're the Eastmans. We've been filming and hunting for over 60 years and three generations. And these are just a few of our adventures. This is Eastman's Hunting TV. It's big game hunting, and it's as real as it gets. I'm Guy Eastman, your host, and this is Eastman's Hunting TV. Today, we're gonna go on a big game mixed bag hunt in Colorado. First, we're gonna venture into the deep back country of central Colorado on a DIY public land mule deer hunt. We're then gonna follow it up and go into southern Colorado after trophy black bear. I finally drew a tag after five years and my hopes are high for a big trophy color phase black bear. So let's not waste any time. Let's head into the back country in central Colorado looking for a big trophy mule deer buck during October. came into this hunt with the odds stacked against us. A heavy late October snowstorm put us a few days behind schedule. And when we arrived, wet, slick, muddy roads shaved an additional day from the hunt. Needless to say, once camp was set up and firewood was split, we wasted no time heading out to look for a buck. to try to find some bucks hanging out up on one of these hills or in these basins that we can go after. The snow's pushed them down a little bit and so I'm hoping they'll kind of be out in the open where they'd be a little easier to see. When there's no snow, it's really hard to pick them out of that brush, especially from this distance, but it's possible with a big spotting scope. So that's what we're gonna do, set the spotting scope and just pick all this apart, try to find some bucks. Unfortunately, after several hours of glassing, we'd only turned up a few smaller bucks. But we're only a few hours in and we're seeing deer, so we had high hopes for the morning. So the following morning, we decided to gain some elevation and look over some different country. Knowing things were quickly coming down to the wire, I couldn't help but think of my hunt in the same area only four years ago. It was my first time hunting this area, so needless to say there was a pretty large learning curve. We spotted a big buck at the top of that peak over there uh, this morning. Looking at a map, we're looking at four and a half to five miles away. Uh, that we spotted this buck. So it's hard to judge him. You can just see his frame. You can't see how long his points are, any of that kind of thing, but he's certainly at least this tall. It's definitely too far for a day hunt, so we're gonna have to pack up on our backs and go in and do an overnighter. Tonight is the second to last night of the hunt. Tomorrow's the last day. It's gonna be a long, cold night in the baby camp. The following morning, we spotted the buck we came in after on the ridge line above us. So we dumped all the unnecessary weight from our packs and started climbing to the top. However, before we reached the top, we spotted an even bigger buck in the drainage below us and decided to make a move on him instead. Look at that buck! It was a hunt that I'll never forget. Going into a completely new area with a limited amount of time to figure things out 
enduring several days of frustration only to have things come together for a storybook ending on the final day of the season. Unfortunately, a last minute break never came for us this year. We decided to cut our losses and head home. Switching gears, we're now bringing you along on a fall black bear hunt in southern Colorado. This is an any weapon fall black bear season and I can hunt with a bow or a rifle. The first day of hunting was uneventful. We only managed to turn up two small bears. That afternoon, as the sun began to set, we headed over to a rocky outcropping that overlooked a grassy opening. Before you know it, Paul had spotted a big bear. It's a big bear. Got a big bear spotted. Now we just gotta go around, get close enough to get a shot at. Can't see him tonight. We'll just back out. Hopefully we haven't alerted him. We'll come back tomorrow, see if we can catch him here. Sounds like a plan. It's the third morning of our fall black bear hunt here in southern Colorado, and we're back where we'd spotted a large color phase boar the night before. After spending the first few hours of daylight looking over the grassy bottom without success, we decided to take a look around to decide where to sit that evening. Just as we were about to head back to camp, Paul peeked over the edge and spotted our bear just inside the timber eating on a fresh deer kill. Man, that's a big bear, 75 yards from where we saw him last night. Well, this is a really nice southern Colorado bear. We kind of did the uh, mule deer and the elk a favor here. This uh, bear actually had killed a fawn mule deer only a couple days ago, had it padded up up here, and we found him eating on it this morning. Had no idea it was here. We saw him in here last night and uh, came back in this morning looking for him. And once you know, we found him on this hillside eating on his uh, pretty fresh kill. So just a really, really nice bear, beautiful hide, kind of a cinnamon color, almost like a grizzly. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous bear, so couldn't be happier. So we hope you enjoyed today's show. I'm Guy Eastman, and remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. We'll see you next week right here on Eastman's Hunting TV. We hope you enjoyed this week's video. Make sure you subscribe to the Eastman's YouTube channel. And we'll send you an email every time we post something new.